Well, it's great to see you guys. I'm, uh, I don't know how many folks are gonna show up tonight, but um, I wanted to use the time to kind of showcase a couple of map making uh, practices or resources um, that we can use, that we could utilize that we haven't already covered and really just answer any questions about specifically about map making and, and planning our our story mapping with place and with maps in mind. Um, so one of the things I one of the things I wanted to do was um, besides kind of share some of those resources in case people just weren't familiar or didn't know that those existed uh, was then just open it up for questions as people as people get ready and and I saw Kekupu you you started to create or created a really cool map for Mauna Lua Bay after that field day and I didn't know if um, I didn't know if you and Christina and the sort of that Mano Hui had really come around an idea for something that you all wanted to do with the Heritage Center or in Manoa in particular, but I was excited to hear from you guys and any other any other Hui that are that are here about kind of what there's what places we were going to be working in and, and sort of what map making strategies or techniques we were looking forward to using. Um, so yeah, we can we can see if other folks come in in a little bit or wait for Jenny and Keala. But if before I start sharing anything, are there any for you, Miley or Kekupo, are there any sort of questions that have popped into your head over the last week or two since Loco Ea and and uh, as you start thinking about what story maps you want to be able to share? Um, I think. Well, I did. We did see Christina at Loco Ea, yeah, and so that was the first time because she'd been sick that we've um, seen her since Mauna Lua. So we kind of talked a little bit about um, what the story map would be for the Hui, because Voyager is the main school, yeah. Yep. Hi, Keala. Um, but that those conversations didn't really finish, and so I wasn't sure what had been decided, if anything because I know last week there was sort of like a rough deadline to, to have something done. So I just heard back from Jenny from in Mano Heritage, just like just right now, because I've been trying to find out like, it did something get decided or, you know, and just kind of catch up. But she said that um, I don't think it has been yet. Cool. What I gather. So um, we're anxious to be a part of whatever you know <laughs> the deciding or the implementation or whatever but i think it's <laughs> uh, still up in the air <laughs> oh no worries yeah. no worries if i can help yeah. create a space for um for your hui to kind of come together and and help you know and share some ideas and and kind of come to some final decisions about what you'd like to try to build and i want you guys to know that whatever you try to build and create is wonderful so it's, if it serves Manoa Heritage Center, if it serves Voyager, if it serves a wider community, if it serves one of our community partners, like you guys started to do with the Mauna Lua map, um, all of those things are, are okay, are great. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, really, I'm really excited by the diversity of, of maps. We had, I know you guys were celebrating Kekupu last week. Um, I was uh, listening to several of the ideas that that some of the who we put forward and got to see some of the things that they've mapped out, including um, Keala and including the Ohana Io Kepo Guerrero and their Hui, um, their plans at Kako Ivi. And I've been speaking with Mark Ellis and mapping out the Awai of, of Nuuanu. And um, yeah, just uh, looking forward to working with some of the Big Island teams and Drew and the, and the Anini Hui are gonna do a, a cool kind of reef focused story map. So we have, oh, and Melissa is the other Mano Hui um, is actually doing something really interesting on, um, on like weaving this sort of theater project that Melissa developed, this theater in the round about Haloa, about uh, Kalo and kind of story mapping is really a community-based sort of theater development project. and. 
kind of mapping that. I, we were chatting with Paige too. Paige had, had some ideas about mapping some of the, I can't remember if they were new trees or ulu trees or trees that they were giving away over there in Puna. Um, so lots of cool different ideas. So there's no like, some people have asked me like, well, what are we supposed to do? What do you want us to do? And I really just want all the hui to um, feel like they're able to tell the stories that, that matter to them or that they think really should be reflected in their communities and um, tell them in the ways that matter the most to them. I think we're going to come up with a lot of interesting, cool stuff. I did speak with, uh, I spoke with Kainalu Stewart. Some of you will remember Kainalu from back in December. Um, he's a graduate student at UH Hilo who um, created the really beautiful story map uh, uh, from the research expedition to Papahunao Mokuakea and uh, beyond science and into Po. And um, it was really, it was great to reconnect with him. And um, he's excited to, to come and see what we've built in a month. So we have about a month to put something together. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited by all of that. Welcome Paige, it's good to see you. And, and Noe and Keala, glad you guys are here. Hello. <laughs> Oh, yay! <laughs> um, as I was, I was explaining to uh, Miley and, and Kupu that um, one of my hopes for this session is to just be able to share a little bit of resource and process for um, building maps out of, out of sometimes content that already exists. Yeah, so it's not a, necessarily about always having to create our own maps, but then also some tools and some process that we can look into for generating our own maps beyond what we've already learned about creating map tours or creating uh, maps using survey one, two, three, or building, building express maps. We talked about all of those when we chatted with Ikaika, um, of, I think three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago um, for our Wednesday session. So that's, that is in a recording and I can answer questions about it and kind of, um, uh, cover some of that those map making techniques or processes as well um, today if that's helpful um, but beyond that I really just wanted to hear people's questions so welcome joy good to see you um, yeah I wanted to I wanted to to, to sort of hear questions and, and better understand kind of well, where people are at with wrapping their minds around their spaces and the task of representing those in story maps and in particular how we can use maps because you, you could build a whole story map using the story ArcGIS story maps and not have a single map in it. Um, that's a possibility, um, but I really think maps help us connect to place and help us orient ourselves and ground us in place. And I think one of the things that this project aims to, a gap that this project aims to fill is maps that are created by our local communities with um, with deep knowledge and aloha for those places, not just coming in from uh, some outside perspective or large scale government perspective um, to generate our maps, but creating maps that really contain the richness of our stories and more of our context and, and all of those things. So um, I encourage us to, to participate in doing that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm curious, I, I invite people to kind of welcome each other and you know, you can interrupt me and say hello to one another. We don't need to listen to me, but uh, yeah, I'm excited you're here. And if there are questions, we can start there and I'll get to the map making stuff later. I haven't seen on these faces. Hi, there's Paige, Joy. Hi. <laughs> Joy and I were texting this week a little bit. So hopefully Sunday the 20th is like the one day or Saturday, yeah? is like the one day I think she can join us um, in the field. I know she's got her own programming going on on spring break, but we're hoping the stars align and we can like all meet up. That's the day. And then, um, yeah, there was some nice developments oh, shoot. Um, today because I talked to my dad and what I think I'm gonna, we're going to do on the 19th or over spring break when we go to Maui is uh, get, the, get all my aunt like my auntie Connie, my auntie TK, my dad, which are the three siblings. Uh, my auntie Moki is in the mainland, but get the three siblings that are here and whatever cousins I can gather together as well and probably just do a barbecue at auntie TK's house, which is my granny's house, which is where a lot of these stories came from. Um, and that's 
kind of just, you know, collect whatever they want to talk about um, there with a few questions that I'm going to work with Kiala and Koa coming up with what they're curious about, you know, like, what was it like? What did you guys used to do? You were young ones, you know, those kind of questions. Um, and so I think that's kind of how it's taking shape that our story map's going to go is that, you know, a barbecue with Auntie TK, make it real, just kind of normal. And then, you know, gather the family together because that's really what it's about. It's about, um, and then I did talk to my dad today and was just saying like, you know, I don't know exactly what we're going to come up with that, but it's like a web page and it's totally fine if it stays within our family. And that was like a really releasing thing of like, okay, let's just, you know, document this. Just like, you know, keep it here. But, you know, you guys might see that some of it, parts of it might, might be great to like show a larger audience and that would be cool. But if not, like, We'll just have this thing that we can share with the kids because you guys are you know all here and luckily like you know you come from like good genes people have like long lives here so you know like talk about what's cool about the family so i just thought i'd i'd share that that today i felt like we made some progress on what the map is kind of taking shape to do because they almost feel like a director and i am not a director i have a friend who is <laughs> When she's asking when she's going to come out, because I told her not to come out in January. So it was almost like, bring her up. She'll take it over. I don't want her to take it over. But um, a, a little bit, the like, gathering the parts together, and I guess visually some, some shots and things that would be cool to get. Um, I'm starting to think about those. So it's coming together, but in a very organic, familial kind of way. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that, Jenny. And yeah, congratulations. That's, you know, I, I think um, that's the feeling that we want to all have, no matter what decision we come to about who the audience is for, for our map and we create it, that sort of sense of like, I have permission to create this. I have, I have a sense of like, I can, I can do this work and it's going to be the right thing for us to do. Um, I hope we all kind of are able to enter into um, whatever field days we're organizing or interactions we're having with the place, connections we're having with the place with that feeling. Um, it's something that all of our partners have facilitated for us really well in, in their locations here on Oahu. Um, and I know many of you have those kinds of practices in your own spaces as well. And I think, you know, whatever those look like, you know, they might be family, community based, they might be like, you know, widespread cultural protocol that, that you apply in your own spaces whatever the case might be, but it's really just about getting to that feeling of, you know, that we're, we're honoring everyone involved in, and that we have this kind of permission to move forward and do this and, sh and share this with whatever decision we've made. And any I'll reiterate, any decision we make about that is wonderful and it's yours to make. Um, so I'm, I'm stoked on that. I'm excited, for, um, I'm excited for what you all are gonna build. And I love the idea that it, it could just be a gift to the family and future generations and something that maybe, you know, um, the Opio, the Keiki are gonna, you know, Ko and Keala and um, wi more widespread cousins can just keep adding to over time. And um, that's pretty neat. Yeah, we have like a family who's like in the mainland too. So to me being raised between both, sometimes I think there can be a gap of like that sense of place the mainland so i'm hoping like to just share with them um you know as well like oh okay because i mean i met some cousins when i was home at christmas it's like second you know but they grew up in the mainland you know and so even sharing that with them and like this is your place too i'm so sorry there's a plane passing out of public <laughs> um but you know that, that connection that, you know, having those stories be able to go to family or people who are outside of Hawaii too, I think is something that's really special, you know, as well. So I think that's cool. Awesome. Cool, any other any other updates from, or, or questions that have kind of come up as, oh, I know one thing before I invite more questions. Um, one thing I, I was thinking about is um, I really encourage all of us, even if we don't have a great story map plan, like we don't know exactly what our story map is going to look like, 
to have some kind of data management plan. And all I really mean by that is like a Google Drive folder and some subfolders so that you can keep track of any content you want to use. And one of the points that I'll make today a couple of times is that a lot of the stories, a lot of the content, a lot of the photographs, a lot of the things might already exist. They might have been family photos you took a long time ago. They might be old painted maps that you have in a closet or hanging on a wall somewhere. They might be, you know, they, they might be stories that you've that you've grown up hearing. Uh, and you don't have to recreate everything in some special field day to put it into your story map. A lot of these things already um, have a place in our lives and can be, you know, transported into our story maps if it's appropriate to do so and something that you want to do. So um, I would just start thinking about, okay, what are the different types of information and content that I'm thinking about incorporating um, and, you know, creating a little bit of a plan for keeping track of those things, ordering those things. One of the things we'll talk about that's related to that um, is with as we build map layers, giving attributes, right, identifiers to data. Um, so you're organizing the data at a very sort of um, a little bit more uh, of a higher level of detail um, when you're collecting it really helps facilitate um, creating better maps. So and we'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean a little bit when I share about um, an app that some of us might want to use. Um, so, yeah. Okay, any other, any other updates or questions that people have? Kumu Dan, I think what you were just saying was a, a question that I was thinking about, you know, uh, and maybe you went over this, um, you know, in one of our sessions about when we're uploading images or, or stuff like that, like what's the best way to um, organize that? If if there's something within the ArcGIS that helps us to organize it, or if it's something that we do separate, you, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm just thinking while we're getting all these images and all of these different um, things that we want to put on, like for not for what I've playing around with it, I, I'm doing one at a time kind of thing. But is there a faster way to upload or import, you know, pictures and stuff like that? That was one of the questions I had working on. The, on yeah, that. no, I would, you know, my my particular practice is to um, create folders on my desk, on my laptop, you know, on my desktop, and then import uh, images, groups of images or videos or data um, into those folders, and then I upload those folders to Drive. Um, and my I have it set up so that my computer does that automatically, but you can also just drag and drop a folder into Google Drive. Some people like to use Box or um, what's, what's the other really popular one? Uh, I can't remember the name, but um, whatever, whatever sort of cloud storage you like to use. Sometimes, especially once you start using drone, or capturing video in 4K or really high resolution, like megapixel images, um, then you're going to run into pretty large file sizes. So I also have gotten used to how can I compress files? How can I shrink file size? Um, and that's a little bit tedious, to be honest. There's not, for me, it's, I haven't found like a really simple workflow where I can make everything happen really fast. Um, but in terms of uploading, I tend to upload batches of photos and videos to um, folders on my desktop and then move those folders to the cloud um, so that they're stored in Drive. And I think I have a lot of storage space available to me in Drive, so um, I utilize that. Um, some people buy more and they use like iCloud if they have Apple products or things like that. But um, just having a having a plan for how you're going, what you're going to do with the images and video and audio and where that's all going to go and how you're going to name it. I can't tell you how many projects I've done and I'm like, I had that perfect image and now it's like IMG 45763 and I can't, I don't, I didn't, can't remember that. And I didn't, you know, so how we name our files and where we put them in the folders to organize them, it really helps when it comes to um, sorting through what we're going to include in the story map, but yeah, there's not a there's not a super fast way to sort of. Or there probably are actually, um, and if there are people on the call who kind of 
have really good workflow for working with images and video, especially because those can be large files, um, then please feel free to share. And I'll do a little bit of research online and try to say, okay, what's the, what's the best workflow? But there's no way to store that data directly in like ArcGIS first for use. You have to import it. Um, and depending on what app you're using or how you're creating exactly like you might be importing directly into story into the story map page. Um, and then there are, you know, there are limitations on file size, for example, I don't think it, images can't be more than 10 megabytes, which um, yeah, So um, important to important to sort of keep that in mind and sort of pay attention to um, to file size and other things like that. It's a good question, though, and yeah, it's one of the it's one of like the more tedious parts, right? Is the data management part of of the project, but it's also you know I tend to kind of overdo it in terms of collection, you know, like oh we have the drones, we have cameras, it's all digital. I can just you know catch as you know capture as much as I want. Um, but then on the processing side, so going through, for example, and I don't know if many people have um, checked out um, the 360 degree photos or videos that we've created, um, but we have a few from Kehoku Velo Velo, from Lokoea, from Waimanalo. And, you know, they're nothing spectacular, but they kind of demonstrate what you can create. And if, if you have a headset, and if anyone wants to borrow like an Oculus Quest so that they can watch some YouTube uh, VR videos and see the videos that we've made from our spaces. Um, it's pretty cool, right? You have the headset on and you look around and it's almost like you're transported into those spaces where we were taking that 360 video. So it's pretty, it's pretty special. Um, and there's a lot we can do with that. Um, and you have access to that. But editing those is like creating those videos, gathering the footage is easy. You just click the button, record the video, but then you have to put it through the GoPro player. And I'm going to go over some of this stuff in, in some of the tech tutorials next week and the week after. But um, uh, I use Adobe Premiere. Some people, other people use Final Cut. Those aren't free software. And um, I have access to them through other work that I do. But I don't, I didn't, I wasn't able to get access to them for everyone in future navigators. So figuring out how we process some of those things is going to be a little bit tricky. But I know that when I have like, four hours of 360 degree footage, that's a lot of footage to sort of go through and pick like what are the parts that I want to do. And it is that can be pretty, te pretty tedious. Um, and and difficult. So it's like picking all oh, this footage over this footage, and you don't really want the experience to go on for hours, you just want it to go for a couple of minutes. So you have to be a little selective. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's uh, the data management side of things, making choices about what you're going to collect, how much you're going to collect, where it's going to go, so you keep it all organized. Um, and you can sort of, if you do it when you're importing it, like when you're taking it from the device or the SD card into your computer, and you can kind of remember like, oh, that was a clip that was really good, then you can rename that one, right? Put a little hint in there, like... <laughs> you know, name it, use this video, because <laughs> you remember that that was a really good one. So, you know, little tricks like that can kind of help as you navigate, navigate through, but it's, yeah, it's a little tedious. It's a good question. Can I ask another question? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, and I, I think I asked it at, in another meeting, but I, I'm going to ask it again, because I'm still trying to figure out what's the easiest or, or best way. How, I, I know with the ArcGIS, we, we cannot collaborate per se on you know it's going to live in one person's kind of account right but do you have any suggestions on how we might be able to um share share the the work and then eventually bring it all together into that one story map does that make sense do you have yeah. any suggestions on how we might be able to do that yeah i think what i'm going to need to do is make one member of each hui probably the hui captain an administrator in the arcgis organization um, which comes with a lot of power most of which i won't tell you anything about because i don't want people accidentally deleting things and 
um, shifting settings within the account. But um, the power that will be useful to you is that you can change ownership. So I do recommend that the content, it, for example, if you're going to create written content, I don't recommend writing the content directly in story maps. I would recommend writing it in a document or a Google document and then copying and pasting it into story maps. Um, just because I think, you know, if something happens to your story map or gets accidentally deleted, it's nice. That's a way of just creating a little bit of a backup, right? And, and backing, backing things up is kind of the rule in, in the computer world. So I like kind of creating content in Google Docs, documents, slides, folders, and organizing it, and then saying, okay, I'm going to move it in. So that's one way where you can collaborate on creating the content and then give one person the kuleana of migrating it into the story map. But it's also nice for multiple people to get practice building the story map and have their own influence over style and design to whatever extent they want to have that. Um, and so that requires changing ownership over the story map. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. Um, once you're an administrator, you can go to that content and there's the three, I can show us how to do it today, actually. Um, it's, it's a pretty, pretty simple. Let me see if I can even kind of pull it up. Um, yeah, so I'll share my screen. So this is, this is my, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Noe. No, that's good. Thank, thank you for making those suggestions. I actually like the slide suggestion because mm -hmm. we could, like if, if we if we use a slide suggestion and each slide or a couple of slides is a heading right from our navigation bar and then we can we can share that pre, um you know like the google slide presentation with with the others in our crew and then people can access and maybe even put pictures on there that we could pull off kind of thing yeah so, so that yeah that's a good thank you thank you for that suggestion yeah no no easy so the the way to um, the way to change ownership, right, is if I, I just created this map today, I'm going to show it to us later. Um, if I want to send it to somebody, then I can click on the, on the box, check that off, and I can click change owner. Um, and that's going to allow me to, you know, look for a new owner within my, uh, within my organization, I believe. I don't know if I can transfer it outside the organization, but say I looked for no Lenny. So I could say, oh, I'm going to give No Lenny um, now control over this piece of content. And you're going to, you would be the only one who is then able to, if I click save, you would be the only one who would see this content unless it was shared publicly, which it is, right? So anybody can view this content, but um, you would be the only one who would be able to edit it, add things to it, um, change it. Um, and it's the same way with Story Map. So I could do the same with. This is our future navigator story map. I could give, I could say change owner, and I want to give that to um, Melissa. Yeah, I could click Melissa and, and save, and then Melissa would have control over our future navigator story map. She would be the only one able to edit it um, and publish those edits. So that's, that's the way. Once you're, I don't think change owner shows up. You guys can check in your account, but I don't think it shows up unless you are an administrator. So right now, if you look at um, the Pacific Blue Studios organization and what I see, right, then I, oops, I go to organization, right? Most of you are publishers and ArcGIS professionals. So, we can I can I can see who's been active right oh look Daphne just logged in so most of you are GIS professional advanced and publishers, but if I click administrator i'll go ahead and do it right Daphne's Daphne is now an administrator and can will have access to be able to um, to change the owner, you might be able to do it without being an administrator um, i'm not totally sure but. Yeah. So hopefully that's hopefully that's helpful. And I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and um, go through tomorrow morning and and kind of click through and make who captains administrators so that you should be able to go in and see the content um, that 
um, people within your your hui within the organization are creating and you can change ownership just don't just don't change ownership of content that's not yours <laughs> not doesn't belong to your hui. yeah I, and I, if, I, I would be personally scared to to be an administrator actually <laughs> what maybe, is, is there other ways that we can share the like so that they can see what's what's being developed i i, I couldn't figure that out like how so we could just share it within our own group and the members in our group. Is there a way to just share it so they can see while one person's developing and recreating the slides and then cutting and pasting from the slide into the the story map and it's being developed? Is there a way that everybody else can see what's happening in real time? Yeah, I um I so anytime you publish those um, the new changes that you've made that you're publishing are going to be visible to anybody who has access to the link. If it's set to private, then you're still only it's only going to be you who can see those see the map at all. Um, if you set it to organization and you share with the future navigators group, then it's really just folks within future navigators, but not just within your hui. Um, if we want, if your group's like we don't want. We don't want to really share it so that everyone in future navigators can see it yet. We just want people within our hui to be able to see it. We can create another group for your hui. And I think it's, you know, I think several people would probably be uncomfortable with being administrators. I mean, it, it just people don't want to feel like they might mess something up. So it's also pretty easy if you just if you just tell me it might take me a few hours or maybe up to a day to respond. Um, and make the change in ArcGIS. But if you just write me an email or you text me or you let me know, um, can you please change ownership of this content to this content? And that's again, you guys can test it out in your own accounts to see if you're able to change the ownership over your own content. Um, you might be able to you might be able to do that already without having to be an administrator. And if that's the case, you don't even need to let me know. You can just pass it around between different people in your hui. But um, they should be able to see the changes that you made once you publish them. Um, so a lot of times people forget to publish. It, it still saves if you don't publish. Um, but if you don't publish it, then whatever new edits you've made since the last time you published it won't be visible to other people. Um, I also see a couple of, um, yeah, I see a couple uh, comments, really good comments uh, in the chat. And also, um, Melissa, I use, I use Chrome. Um, for me, it's it's it just presents a lot more a, a lot more easily to use. Um, I know, I think it's technically should work in Safari, but um, but I tended I tend to use Chrome. I don't know if other people have preferences there there after playing around with story maps, but um, yeah, I feel like ArcGIS Online works a little bit better in the in the Chrome browser. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Being in and out. No, it's good. I'm dinner, right? <laughs> oh, that's okay. I know this is a it's it's a weird time, anyways, on Wednesday nights. I am thinking about maybe moving this time on Wednesday, like to not being so late. But I'm I'm gonna try to get feedback from everybody on whether it's possible to find an actual ideal time. I don't know if it would be, but um, if people are available a little bit earlier and that creates space for uninterrupted family dinners and other things in the evening could probably make that happen. All right, welcome back to Paige. Any other any other questions? Um, especially I, I, I uh, I'm curious what people are thinking in terms of making maps of their places so far. And kind of what process they're thinking about using if they've even thought about it or you know which of those the map making tools that we've kind of explored so far like express map and the map tour um, and maybe survey one two three if people have questions about those or if they're thinking about using one of those um, yeah or other questions they can be questions completely unrelated to those topics Alt pager, are you talking to us? You're on mute. We couldn't hear you. 
but we want to. Okay, I want to make maps with uh, lava data from the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, what do you have like a, a process that you're imagining that you want to be able to use or or a particular tool or method for creating those maps? No, I'm not. I'm not really familiar with all these new tools that are available. Cool. Well, I'll just say, you know, there's there's always kind of the um, in both ArcGIS map viewer and in uh, using the express map feature in um, story maps, you can create map any map by hand. Yeah, basically, I'll say by hand, but you just can sort of add points and polygons and lines shapes and lines um, based on your knowledge of a particular area and you can assign images and labels and descriptions um, to those different map features those different elements yeah so you can kind of build a, a data layer from scratch if you will um, and working directly in a, in an already existing on an already existing base map um, so that's something that that gis lets us do and i can sort of showcase the, those two things in just a moment i can share my screen um, but i'm also interested in in helping support people in figuring out how to use some of the you know, the more um, tech, in, tech powered um, map making tools, you know, one of them being, for example, survey one, two, three, where people can add a, you can send, you can send out a survey link and the community could go out and map um, a lava flow, right? They could map the boundaries of a lava flow by drawing the boundaries of the lava flow and shapes um, in their survey tool on their phone or their iPad and submitting that data and that would that would populate on a map kind of like the local AIA map that we made with the pool honua um, biodiversity where we took those pool honua out of the water we counted um, the various kinds of organisms that were living within those pool honua we entered that data into a survey one two three and now there's little points within those within the um, local AIA on the map that showcase that sort of snapshot of data that that was collected at that time, but we could have, you know, we could have done something other than points. We could have done lines or polygons. We can share lots of images, um, you know. So along with where they where someone was drawing, for example, the boundaries of a lava flow, they could also um, show images of damage caused by that lava flow. And they could share those images that were collected. Um, through their phone. Survey123 is a great tool if you really want community input, right? You want a community generated map. You want a map that lots of people can contribute to. Um, then Survey123 kind of empowers you to collect that data um, from whoever has access to the link or the QR code for that, for that survey. And building those Survey123s is something that I'd love to see Hui kind of practicing and seeing how they might use. Um, and a number of our partners kind of showcased in different ways and talked about different ways that they might want to use it. But I'm really kind of curious about the different kinds of ideas and ways that we would want to engage folks beyond our hui maybe, um, who are interested in contributing to a map. So that's kind of one tool, the Survey123 tool. And there's also the Map Tour tool built into Story Maps. And that allows you to convert images, geotagged images from your phone. You would take the photos from your phone, move them into a folder on your desktop, and then import that folder directly into um, the map tour function in Story Maps. And it would populate the map based on the, the geo uh, tag data in those metadata in those photographs. So you'd get a map of a bunch of images that you could then add descriptions to and so on. So you could create a map tour of a lava flow to use that, that example page if this is relevant to you. You could, you could have somebody drive or walk in the areas that were affected by the lava flow taking photos at multiple different locations, put those in a folder upload that folder into create a map tour within story maps upload the folder into the story map 
and then that would automatically populate a map. You could select a different base map that you were using. Um, you could customize that map to look the way that you wanted it to, different colors for different locations, et cetera. Um, but that would give you kind of a really nice visual image-based um, story about how the lava flow was affecting the community. And you could pick those locations based on the story that you wanted to tell, and you would be in control. It's not a, necessarily a tool for community-based storytelling, but it's whoever has the phone and is going to be gathering the images, they get to choose the locations that they shoot and, and the story that they want to tell along that map tour. And map tours can be sequential, but they can also just be galleries. So you could just have 50 images in a row, one through 50. So kind of tell a sequential story, or you could just have 50 images and people could kind of peruse those 50 images and, and see the impact of the lava flow in a community that way. So those are a couple of ways that we've kind of talked about before using tools like survey one, two, three and the map tour function and story maps. Um, and I'm happy to help build those tools with people um, if you have ideas on how you'd like to use those. Uh, today, I also want to talk about a, um, an app called Quick Capture. Um, and Quick Capture is a sort of like a combination of uh, Survey123 and Map Tour. It allows you to basically create a kind of app overlay where you can go around and collect data very quickly. So you build a form in Quick Capture and you kind of tell it what you're looking for, right? So you'd be very specific about the kinds of attributes that you were hoping to, are expecting to encounter. Um, so maybe you wanted, um, maybe you were going around and you wanted, uh, we were gonna work at Kako Oivi with Ohana Iokepo Guerrero and their hui, and we wanted to document all of the wetland birds that we saw. And wetland birds might be moving around, might be hard to document. So we just want to take a quick photo and then we can click right there in the form. Oh, that's Alaiula, right? And I can click right there and that's, I can enter that data and it automatically populates to a map um, through the quick capture app. Um, so I'll share, I'll sort of share my screen and sort of show um, a little bit of a tutorial on that. But that's another way, right? Using that quick capture app that we can kind of build a form to help us collect our data, what we want to, what we want to put onto the map. Um, and it just sort of creates a system um, that automates um, some of the data collection. Uh, and then there's a lot of high powered tools, right? There's a lot of like ArcGIS insights and 3D visualizations and a lot of really, you know, um, cool things that we could get into. But I think it's nice to kind of start with some of those simpler tools. And then if you realize, oh, I want to, I want a 3D map of the terrain, and then I want to show how the lava flowed in these different, you know, Kilauea eruptions, um, then that's all possible, right? The, the, the tools that you have available to you can help you do that. Um, and you can visualize the lava flow and show it kind of moving through the landscape. Um, all those things are, are things that exist but they're a little bit more technical and take a little bit more time to learn. But I think once we get in the, in the habit of generating maps, um, then each next step kind of becomes a little bit easier. So it doesn't, be, doesn't feel so, so far out of reach. Um, a lot of those things are still hard for me. I have to go dig into the tutorial and follow each step and, oh, I missed something and go back and try again. Um, so I'm still learning uh, as well. But um, yeah, I think we have plenty of tools to tell some of the, you know, some of the cool stories in our places and, and our te technological proficiency can just um, evolve and grow as, as we are interested in, in taking it. I'm definitely happy to, definitely happy to help. Now, I love that idea though, Paige, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a cool, cool concept. And there may be, you know, there may be folks with um, expertise within the various departments and organizations also affected um, that might be able to sort of accelerate um, whatever sort of tech, technology learning and development that, that we wanna do with GIS. Yeah, the volcano, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, they're, they're really good. Yeah, I bet. I know one resource that I, we, we pointed to um, 
I think a couple of weeks ago was uh, just the state GIS program. Yeah, the geoportal.hawaii.gov, um, and I can put can put that um, into the chat. Uh, and this has so many interesting data layers um, and visualizations. Most of them are 2D. They don't have a lot of 3D um, data visualizations. But if you go to that database, there's actually so many different um, sets of data. I can actually, I'll share my screen um, because this is something that, you know, we don't have to create all the maps that we might want to share in our story map. There are ways to utilize um, this resource um, that already exists and use existing content. So um, this is the Hawaii Statewide GIS Program, Department of Planning, and they have all of these different data categories. Yeah, so you have Ahupua'a boundaries, um, you have different uh, like socioeconomic data, you have environmental, climate data, demographic data, you have all kinds of interesting stuff on transportation, freshwater resources, coastal resources, um, different elevation maps. So you have some pretty cool, some pretty cool stuff. You have historical maps, which this is, this is beta, so um, it's not, uh, this particular version is, is not ready for download, but this one is. And so you can actually do, you, know, you can have, a, if you remember the swipe feature in story map, you can import, if I click on the historic and cultural map, it's gonna take me to um, the maps that are in that database. It's only three, right? But you have um, right now, Moku, uh, geographic names and Ahupua'a and uh, you can click on this, it'll open up this data layer, and it says, I want to use this, and actually, you can generate a map, um, so we can, we can zoom in, right, and we can see, oh, lots of unknown, so we have a bunch of, a bunch of geographic names, supposedly, I haven't actually looked at this layer before, but as we zoom in, we can see all these different points. And if I want to use it, and this is true of any of the maps in the system, right? I can actually create a map within ArcGIS. I can open it within ArcGIS, right? But all I really want to do is, let me see, I'll make sure. No, I don't want to create a map. Oh, I can open an ArcGIS story map. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to start building my story map with an existing data layer, um, I could do that. But if I open an ArcGIS online, then it's going to take me here. And all I really need to do is go down to layer and click on this link, right? Copy the link. So I went down, I clicked on the layer. Um, this, open, this page opened, the point layer opened. I got this URL that I just copied. And now I can go to this new Uranu rainfall and streams map. And all I have to do is go add, add a layer from the web, put that as my base map and say add layer. And now that's added, this historic culture on place names, place names map is added to um, all these other maps that I've included, right? And I can click the layer on and off. So if I wanna get rid of it, here I have kind of rainfall and stream data. I was um, thinking about, I was working with Mark Ellis, uh, who's doing their project in, in New Uanu and was you know, trying to look at, oh, can we see anything interesting if we have a good um, rainfall map and stream data and, there's all kinds of layers like flood hazard areas and other, oh, and I even put uh, toe in surfing areas on the North shore. So you can add all these different layers to the map. Um, but this is rainfall data and stream data that's showing right now. Yeah, so the, you have access through this portal, right? Um, if I go back and I, through this geospatial data portal, in all these different categories, if you you want to um, you want to open an ArcGIS, then you click on that option, uh, and you'll be able to uh, 
uh, you'll be able to use that link and import that into a map. Now, once you've created, once you've imported into a map, you do have to save. So I've already named this map new owner rainfall and streams. Do you want to save that map? If it's the first time you're saving it, it'll prompt you to, to name it. Um, and then all of these different things, you can play around with uh, how they show up, what they look like on your map. So you have some control. You're also able to perform a few different basic analyses. Um, and I just recommend that people kind of play around with these or look up some tutorials based on what they want to do. But each of these layers you now have access to and now I can import this into a story map very easily. Yeah, so if I wanted to create a story map from this, um, right, that's, that's really, really easy to do. This map is gonna show up when I click on map in story maps, which maybe I should just, maybe I should do that. So I'll go to storymaps.arcjs.com. And I click on a new story. And I'm going to start from scratch. It's launching my builder. And once I get into here and I want to add a map, hopefully what we should see under my maps is the new Uanu rainfall and streams. Right, this is the map I was talking about that we created for local AI using survey one, two, three. Right, that biodiversity survey, but I can click on this map that I just created in Map Viewer, right? Which you can always get to Map Viewer if you if you're in your Pacific Blue Studios account, and you just go to the home page. Then you can just click on Map. And when you click on map, it's going to take you, it's going to actually take you to the new viewer. Um, I'm so used to using the classic view, the map viewer classic that I usually shift, but you might be, it's, it's pretty intuitive to use um, the new viewer as well, but I usually click on map viewer classic. And now I can create in this map and I can add layers. Um, I can browse living Atlas layers. So there's a lot of layers that aren't in the, um, Hawaii State uh, GIS portal, um, but exist as as openly available public data online. So in this living atlas, there are um, a lot of interesting kind of cool maps. So I might want to do the slope map that shows me how steep uh, the terrain is. And I can add that to the map and you can go here and you can see the Sierras and the Rocky Mountains and over here, the Appalachians, not nearly as steep, but Right, pretty cool. And this is actually, this um, slope map probably applies to at least the United States. Oh, actually the whole world, look at that. And then if I wanna change my base map, I just click on base map. Maybe I want imagery instead of this sort of grayscale map. And so you can make maps this way and add different layers from different already existing data sources. The Living Atlas is one, the Hawaii State um, GIS portal is another. Um, and then of course we can create our own layers. You can add uh, map notes. So this would allow me to, um, I'm gonna give it this, this set of map notes a name. Um, I'll just go ahead and leave that there, but that lets me add different points, text or lines to the map different polygons um, or shapes uh, that I want to add to the map. So um, this, this gives me another tool. If I don't want to work in express maps, <clears throat> excuse me, this gives me another tool for kind of creating maps. And then, like I said, I, I imported that. Um, I imported that to, uh, to this story map. So now I'm not going to play around too much with like what which of these features are viewable or, or not viewable, but I can control that for when people open my story map, which of these layers that exist in this map are they going to be able to see. Um, but I can place that map. And now I have a now I have a cool map that I made. This one's a bit random. Um, I have a cool map that I made that exists within my story map. So 
yeah, I'll stop sharing and be quiet, but I just wanted to kind of highlight um, a couple of those tools. Um, I also mentioned that I would I would share about quick capture, but what I'll actually just do is share a link. Maybe I'll share my screen as well, just so that other people can other people can see it. Kung Dan, can I ask a question about that map? Um, so yeah. you know how you when when you add that into your story map, is there a way where you can focus in and just one specific area how or 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 will it just put the entire like like when we put our ahupua map in we it we focused in on oahu but i saw moloka'i on the side right just like on yours i saw moloka'i inside and i was just trying to see if there was a way that we could just focus particularly on moku of ko'olau right ko'olau poko and then even more particularly on the the ahupua of heia is can you do that or will it just have, you know, it'll just be a, a, the bigger map and then I'm, I'm not asking no, the right question. No, you are asking the right question. Yeah. So um, you're, you're basically asking about kind of visibility when people first open the map page of what's the scale um, that they're going to see um, and focus. And, and we do have control over that um, within the story map. Generally, wherever you saved, whatever sort of, uh, range of view you saved your map at that's going to be the range of view that shows up um, when you put your story map with a little bit of a caveat that sometimes um, you were working in a window that was only this big and then the window that they're viewing in is this big so it extends the map further so you kind of kind of play around with like what's the right range for um, and it's different by different devices as well so some maps look really good on a computer sized screen, but don't look so great on a phone. Um, and so you have to kind of play around and, and think about where are people going to be interacting with this map and what size screen will they likely be using and, and those kinds of things. But yeah, when you do save, um, when you do save your map, then you should be able to, you should be able to adjust those settings. So like in the in the story map that I just shared, it just went immediately to the same settings that I can share it again to the same settings, right? That I had saved it in as my new one or stream map. But if I go back to, it's going to ask me maybe if I want to save. No, it's not, but I might have to go, go back a few clicks to get to my, uh, to my new one or stream map. Oh, it's not going to let me open it. But if, if I go, so the way I would get back to it, yeah, is go to my content. And click on this web map again, open that up. And then say I was working with Mark, yeah, and I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to sort of focus in on Nu'uanu, um, then I don't need it at this scale, right? So I can kind of zoom in. Say, okay, we're going to really, we're going to really focus in on, on just this range right here. Now I'm, I'm in a small window right now, so it's going to look a little bit different when most people open it up. So I might zoom in even a little bit more, right? And if I save this, if I save this map, again, I'm not really... If I save that and then I now when I go back to work in the story map, I haven't even published this yet, so I don't know if the changes are going to show up right away, but I'm just refreshing and um, seeing what happens uh, when it loads that map this time. Potentially, we're going to get a more of a zoomed in view. It's going to oh, not really actually yeah, it's the same. Um, so I might have to I might have to delete this and then reload the map again now that i've saved it um for it to for it to be up for the field of view to be updated and then i think you might have some control over um you know if you click edit there might be a way um within like whatever whatever range you So again, just kind of working with Mark, whatever range you kind of, you put in here, 
Maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit more. And then I place the map and it's gonna show up like that. So yeah, that's another pretty easy way to do it. Um, is where it, whatever it looks like when you're editing it um, is what it's likely gonna look like on the screen when you place it. And then you can also control like, maybe I don't need a map that's gonna be all the way across the screen. I want it to be a little bit smaller and I'm gonna have some text next to that map then I can, I can do that too. And those controls are all there. You guys have probably been playing around with those already. So yeah, I, yeah. So I, when I was thinking about this, I just thought, okay, what are what are a couple of little pretty simple tricks that can kind of take you from beginner story map maker to like a little bit more intermediate, you know, map maker. And I just wanted you all to know that there are tools. I put the um, I put the getting started with quick capture um, tutorial in the chat, and I'll also just show that on my screen real quick so that it shows up in the recording as well. But I think that you know this tool is pretty helpful, and so you get a sense of what it looks like. Um, when you open quick capture you have on your phone it's an app you have to download from the app store or, or Google Play um, on Android devices it's available on both it looks like this and you log into your to your ArcGIS account and then uh, you're going to be able to open a project on your phone but you actually have to create and this is what it's going to look like so I don't maybe I can actually make my screen a little bit bigger Right, so in this particular example, right, it's talking about road debris, right, or urban search and rescue, or a police officer reporter. So people have created different applications for different, different captures, quick captures for different purposes, and you can create different icons. And so if you were filling, if you created this road debris report project, you would create this template, you would say I'm looking for car parts or road signs or litter or road marker, vegetation, roadkill, all these different categories. And then you would create the visual icon to represent that. And now somebody would go through, um, someone who would open the project who you shared it with, they would click uh, vegetation and then they would take a picture of a branch lying in the road. Yeah, and you can imagine sort of with the wetland bird example that we were talking about, um, you could do something similar where you created a one attribute was for um, Aku'u, one was for Ai'o, one was for Alai'ula, one was for Alai'ke'okeo, and you had the different birds that you were expecting or anticipating and seeing, and the points, um, you were going to have it map the points where you saw those and use a quick um, photograph, um, and, and you can go through kind of quickly, and this just walks you through kind of an example. Um, of how to create. And then this is how you actually get the project started. You have to create what's called a feature layer. And so within your content tab, um, in your, you're gonna create a new item and it's a feature layer. And I can probably jump over there and open up my content, just so everyone can see that. And so the way I get one of these projects started is I click on Right here, right under content, I click on new item, right? And I'm gonna wanna create a feature layer, right? So I select this feature layer right there. And then that's gonna walk me through what are all the different attributes, right? Maybe you've already created a layer, maybe your students or your family has been collecting data um, on a particular, um, on birds that you've identified, but you haven't done it in a map-based way. Um, maybe you've just been uh, I counting um, in a larger area um, and or there's various templates um, that you can also choose from. Um, but once you've created this, the tutorial kind of walks you through uh, what what you need to do to turn that feature layer into a quick capture project. And that's going to be what allows you to build that little app and what kind of data you want to capture, um, what all the different names are going to be as you organize that data layer. And so now this data layer is going to populate a map, 
right? It's kind of like survey one, two, three. Like as soon as someone enters a data point into the project, it's going to show up. Um, that data point is going to show up on the map. And then you can play around with how you want to visualize um, those data points. Um, the default in survey one, two, three is a red dot. Um, but it's actually pretty easy to change attributes. So I'm not going to go too far into this. You guys can play around with it. But if I go to, um, let's see. Too much content. Um, if I go to our future navigators crew web map, Uh, this is the web map that is showing up on our um, on our story map, um, our future navigator story map. And if I open this up, you can see I'm going to open in Map Viewer Classic just because it's easier for me. Creature of habit. You can see I turned the um, each of the Hui applications um, that that joined the project. I turned into a little sail into a little va into a sailboat and the way that i can do that is i can go to um i can go to the layers over here in the content so if i click on content i can see all the layers that are present on this map there i can I, there's a several things that i can do um like configuring the pop-ups and uh, do different things to this data layer um so that it's transparency so i can make it you know not uh, totally stand out. I can kind of make it a little bit uh, of a dollar or, or see through um, data points. I can set the visibility range. So at what point do you see this data when you're zooming in or out? Um, but then here, if I go to if I go to change style, I'll go back and that's this little set of shapes right here. If I go to change style, then you can see that um, here are my options for, I'm showing single locations. I've chosen this symbol, but maybe I don't want to do that symbol anymore. Maybe I want to change the symbol and, oh, it's not letting me. But if I clicked on change symbol, normally it should allow me to pick from a range of pre-existing symbols or actually uh, upload my own image or symbol that I want to use. And then you can adjust the characteristics of those. Um, there we go. I click on symbol. So if I just want it to be a point, um, I don't have to choose just from shapes. I can go to National Park Service and you know see what I see. archery could have made you a bunch of archers or a bunch of dollar signs, a bunch of umbrellas. Um, so yeah, we have our we have kind of some capabilities to set characteristics of the map within those data layers themselves. I know it's a, it feels a little technical and confusing, but once you create a layer, a feature layer, and once you start trying to edit it, um, and there are plenty of tutorials to help you too, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple to do and figure out. So if you're feeling like, wait, where did he go? How did he do that? One, there's a recording of this. And two, there's many more tutorials that will walk you through step by step that are much more helpful than me. Um, and three, you, you guys are all very smart. So um, it's pretty, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that's capable of being figured out on your own with, as long as you're willing to be a little bit frustrated and kind of like, where, where does that button go? Where did that thing go again? It happens to me all the time. So, and I've been doing this for at least a dozen years. All right, I'm here and we have about 15 more minutes. Um, and of course, I'm always happy to stay on a little late, but um, those are kind of just some of the some of the tools and resources that I thought, oh, so they knew that the if, if everybody knows that these are there, then they know they don't have to create maps from scratch. They don't have to wonder how to do that. They can really start building um, maps. I love, um, Noe, your question because a lot of data layers cover the whole world or the whole country or all of Hawaii. We want to really maybe focus in on our, our particular place. Um, so that really that question of how do we set sort of visibility range and how do we 
um, make it so that we're really focusing people's attention on on our particular place. Um, that's going to be that's going to be something that you're going to want to play around with and figure out for sure. Everybody's ready to go. <laughs> well, I just was like, hey, thank you so much, Dan. I, I do need to actually step off right now, but nice to see you guys. And thank you so much for sharing, as always, if, um, all the information tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joyce. Good to see you. Yeah. Shoots. Uh, and so uh, Saturday's time changed. Is that correct? With Saturday night is time change. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but not for us. For Saturday? Oh, Saturday's time change of the event. Because Saturday is the time change on the mainland, yeah? They all go, oh. they, all, they all move their clocks. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Saturday's, Saturday. Saturday, we'll be in the Zoom canoe. That's right. We'll be in the Zoom canoe um, in the morning because uh, I got an invitation to come uh, help build a story map um for the folks who organized the Kuuloa Hakipu'u um, canoe festival so that's the department of parks and rec um and it's just that's a very special place and um it'll be fun to see a lot of the ohana out sailing uh, i hope i hope the weather's good and um people learning about uh so i think it's going to be um going to be a cool morning so i'll be out there and uh, flying the drone and I'll have the GoPro Max and um, I'm I'm curious to see if there are things that we can capture using Polycam. Um, so all of those things I'll, I'll be able to kind of run through um, some tutorials, probably about uh, 30 minutes on each of those technologies and then uh, and answer any questions. And then we'll probably have a little bit of time. Hopefully we can um, view and participate in, in some of the protocol and ceremony and learning and sharing that's going to be happening out there. If anybody, that's all going to be on Zoom, but if um, I'm hoping that it should all work. Um, I've been out there before and had decent enough reception to do that. Um, but people on Oahu are also welcome to, it's a public uh, festival. Um, it's open to everyone. It's at Kualoa Beach Park. Um, so anybody who wants to come celebrate Va'a and Hakipu'u and uh, Kualoa, that's, uh, you're welcome. And you can, you can join me in person. You can ignore me and stay away if you want to. Um, don't like wave at me and then ignore me because that'll, that'll make me sad. But um, yeah, just don't let me see you. But uh, yeah, I, excited to be out there on Saturday. So 10, 10 a.m. Um, and then... Uh, I'll I'll be out there till about twelve thirty. Okay. Mahalo nui. Everybody have a good night. Mahalo joy. Aloha. Aloha. Bye. I hope you guys have a good <laughs> evening. Thanks, Kayla. Good night, everyone. Ahui ho. Spending time doing this. <laughs> oh, Paige, can I can I um, let you know that I'm I am uh, going to try to come over to Hawaii Island, um, oh. the week of sometime the week of March like twenty first to twenty fifth, twenty sixth time. So if um, and I'm hoping to also work with our friends at the Honoka and and Waimea crew. So. Um, if uh, you're interested in connecting or chemo or anybody wants to um, do some work together on while I'm over there, I'd be more than happy to. I think I'm going to fly. I haven't decided yet, but I think I might fly in and out of Hilo anyway. So um, and visit my family there. So it would be uh, be if you're interested in, and willing, I'd be more than happy to kind of talk story or get out in the field and try to build something together or whatever, whatever the case might be happy to do it. Yeah. I've been trying to think of, I think the, the Parker school guys are probably the most likely to have a field trip. Are you, are you familiar with Hawaii tracker? 
the website. Yeah, Hawaii Tracker. Yeah, I was trying to talk to those guys about um, getting involved in this because I know they're interested in technology and they have some projects like looking at Poiki, trying to encourage the state to get the boat launch built again. And there's sure. some issues with the site. So that that's a field site I've thought of, but it's you know kind of different than the sort of restoration projects that have been happening on Oahu. Oh, Paige, it's uh, I mean that that point of access to the ocean is uh, is cherished by that community, and the loss of that was a was a heavy hit. So you know, there's a lot of stories there worth telling, and nothing. Nothing that we are, you know, regeneration, the resilience, the strength, the beauty of Hawaii looks like however many places and however many Hawaiians and however, you know, it looks that many different ways. So um, nobody needs to feel like, oh, that's that's not like what they were doing during the field days on Oahu. Not at all. I think, um, you know, whatever the whatever the stories are in our community that we are want to give our attention to. I think those are worthy of, of building a story map for. So yeah, not to say we have to do that one, but it would definitely fit within the, within the intention and scope right. of the project. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, think about it. And, and uh, when I'll, I'll touch base again next week and, and kind of share some of my thinking around the dates, and then that'll give you a couple of weeks of a heads up in case you want to try to get together. And um, I also understand if it's, busy times and the timing doesn't quite work out, but um, just wanted you to know that I'm, I'm happy to help support however I can. Okay. Yeah, mahalo. Cool. All right, Ma good night. Ahoy ho, good night. When's the next time we're gonna meet in person? Hey, cool, that's a good question. You're gonna come to uh, Kualoa on Saturday? I like your haircut, by the way. It looks good. We're going to try and go. Um, oh, cool. No, but... you guys would love it. It's going to be a good day. But other than that, um, you know, I'm going to I'm sneaking out to uh, local Ea again on March 9th. Um, I'm going to be sneaking over to Mount Lua to help Mount Lua Bay with some with a cool uh, project over spring break. I think Kupo is going to be there too. Tree to sea camp. Gee. <laughs> so that's Monday, March 14th, I think. Um, 13th, 14th. So there's a couple opportunities. So I'll make sure I'm in touch with you guys and hopefully we can all get together again soon. But, but yeah, Basically, just make sure you're doing whatever mom says and help her out, and then we'll we'll make something happen. He got he got distracted. <laughs> He's doing neighborhood watch right now. Oh, good. Because our there's somebody watching. Check. Really? Are you kidding? Uh oh. <laughs> no. So all right, because our house is kind of like we kind of we have a perch, and so. Anyways. <laughs> Any noise he wants to have a look out, but yeah, hopefully we can make it. And we were we we're trying to um, maybe arrange something for the nineteenth. I don't know oh, where. Cool. If I'm, I wow, talked with Pauline about. Well, the nineteenth is a Saturday. You don't only have a school field trip on that day. I do. Your school field trip is on March thirty first. You're going to Maui. Oh, oh he's gonna go visit Auntie Jenny. I think. Fun. Fine, do it. Yeah, and sail, sail there. Yeah, no, I'm going with my class. Oh, never mind. I would, I would love for, and this is for, this is for any of us, all of us. I should have mentioned it um, when more people were on the call, but uh, we'll keep it in the recording. Um, if folks are out in the field, really at any point, but I think you know the dates that we had kind of set aside were March fifth and and March nineteenth for kind of do it mapping in our own communities. Um, if people are willing to kind of zoom and, you know, come into the zoom canoe and share a little bit about their place and what they're doing. I think I'm, I'm hoping to do that with, with Noe and, and their Hui um, from Kako Ivi um, and, and Heia. 
um, for, not for the whole time that they're there, but you know, for a portion of it, just to kind of introduce the space. And so the more that we can have, especially on the 19th, I think, um, but even if it's other days, you know, we just let people know and people who want to can come in and, um, and I'll, I'll be there. I, I'm, I'm in love with all of the different spaces and, and ways that we're engaging with them. So, yeah, I think that's, that's something to keep in mind if, if Pauline wants to set something up or you guys have something in mind for the 19th then, um, and you're welcome to invite other future navigators. You know, there are people who are participating in the program, but have not really been able to be as engaged, like in these zoom call sessions or even make it to all of the Saturday sessions. But we have a whole team at YNI high school, um, that's, that's working on the program. So, you know, but they haven't been able to attend a lot of the, a lot of the sessions, but I've been supporting them with kind of learning the story mapping and thinking about how they might use it. So, um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I hope that we can get a little glimpse into the worlds that everybody's kind of connecting to before the second. And then on the second, we'll get to see from everyone who gets to share their story maps a little bit about each other's spaces and places. But yeah, that's another thing to keep in mind about the second. I'll make sure this stays in the recording too, is um, if there are people like I just invited Kainalu Stewart back to join us on April 2nd. Um, if there are people who you want to have come into that space to maybe they're your community partners, maybe they're members of your hui, but they haven't been able to um, connect with you quite as much, but you'd love for them to be there to kind of celebrate and, and see what you guys have created and get excited. You know, I know a number of the folks that, for example, those of you who are at local Ea in the afternoon, um, Kimiona brought so many of the 808 cleanups crew and it was awesome. They stayed for it to go to Kehoku Veluvelo in the evening. And um, a lot of them have written me and asked. And, um, you know, we had a family that morning that was with us um, at, at local Ea and daughter was doing a project. And so we've connected and they're really interested. So I feel like there's a lot of good, a lot of good, uh, you know, energy people are excited to sort of see how they can participate and learn more about this. And I'm in the middle of applying for funding to be able to support more communities to do this in more focused ways in their own places and um, and allow more schools a little bit easier access to because a lot of school groups can't really do the Saturdays and can't, you know, all this stuff. So trying to figure out what the right platform is for them. Anyway, there's a lot, a lot going on, and I, I appreciate not only your all's participation, but your kind of leadership in this and, and Manao and, and co-creating the experience. So feel free to invite people and share your experience and your places with them and um, in ways that feel appropriate and, and feel interesting to you all. Kumu Dan, um, I really appreciate that you sh shared about the Kualoa thing happening this weekend and then also I think on Mighty um Mighty Networks you you talked about the Mauna Lua mm -hmm. thing. And so you know when you have those other opportunities and I think you just mentioned a couple of stuff that you're helping like local air do and whatever. If if things come up where they need like it's open for people to come and kokua, if you can just let us know. Um you know if we're free we'd we'd love to go out and, and kokua and just help out, you know, whatever we can and uh, and so like uh, along that lines, um, I do oh, you have okay. any information Fine. about the the Mauna Lua? What's happening on the the fifth and the nineteenth? Do you know the times and stuff? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I went. I, I I'm still here, but the lights went out on me again. Um, let me go. I'll... So I'm not just a ghost. <laughs> love. I love that question. I'll be right back. So with the coral surveys um, at Wailai Beach Park, um, you know, that's sort of right kind of close to Kahala Mall, or sorry, the Kahala Hotel. Um, and that's taking place on the 5th and 19th in the mornings. I can try look that up, the details of the timings real quick. I'm pretty sure I should have it. Um, 
but yeah, that's a, that's a cool opportunity to, to continue to support them and engage with that space. A little bit of a different location from where we were at at Pico. Um, and the sort of focus on corals and the reef monitoring is also, you know, pretty interesting. Um, so definitely encourage folks that, that want to get out there to, uh, to do that. Give me just a moment while I try to pull up the most recent email. And Malama Mauna Loa is great too. They're really, you know, they're still holding pretty regular events. Um, and so, you know, I think if you reach out to their email at volunteer at, at malamamonolua.org, they can give you quite a few different opportunities um, that they have for, for engaging. I, but I, I, see I want to say- the Mighty Networks, sorry. I see, you posted it on the Mighty ne ne Networks. I see it now. There's I a did, flyer. Oh, it's from eight to 11 on the fifth and one to four on on the 19th and that's that's really because of tides yeah so they um they're i think they're probably trying to go out at low tide um but yeah that's uh uh that should be a fun opportunity i don't think i'll be able to go either day but um would love it if if future navigators were out there that's one thing i'm i'm trying to um kind of feel out like you know, because the three locations and partners we worked with are spread out around the islands and we didn't have a lot of participants, future navigators from the communities that our partners were located in, um, which wasn't really part of the plan, but that's just how it kind of worked out. Um, you know, I, I'd still like to figure out ways that we can continue to engage and support the work that they're doing while also honoring the fact that we have places and spaces that we have Kuliana too in our own, you know, in our own communities as well. So I'm trying to figure that out, but um, I definitely would love it if, if we could continue to continue to get out and, and support those, those groups. Sorry, one more question looking at the Mighty Networks. You posted something that's happening on March 31st. Yeah. Is that some, is that like high level? <laughs> is that like high level i probably should have i probably should have posted kind of a warning like only if you're only if you really want to go off the deep end into gis um but it's not really i mean i think that um they are going to do a good job uh it will be high level but they'll do a good job of presenting kind of steps that you can take into you know um integrating remote sensing, integrating, you know, different map visualizations and analysis um, into what what you're doing. So for those people who are starting to think like, okay, I've got a good handle on this initial story map, we made a really nice story map with a couple of cool maps that I was able to, you know, learn how to create. And they're starting to feel like, I think we could probably take this to the next level. That's one way to do it. It's not the only way. But I'm, I'm particularly interested in how we can, um, you know, use technologies like the drones, like field kit, and we can start letting communities collect and control and share their own data. Um, not necessarily for like, you know, traditional research, like Western science research um, purposes, but, you know, to really sort of engage in practices of kilo again and maybe some ways that that we've you know have have stopped doing in many of our places and communities so i think that's the um that's kind of the hope is that eventually in future navigators like we have more experienced folks with gis who are doing that kind of stuff and we have people who are just coming in and there's more of a spectrum we're all kind of newbies you know this year the first go around we're all just figuring it out um which is great. Um, and then I'm just hoping that over time, right, some people kind of get drawn into different aspects of it and like different aspects of it and are starting to generate, you know, some um, hold some EK that that will allow us to do even more and more. I think it would be it still be great if all we ever do is kind of create really cool fun story maps in the way that we're doing it this this go around. But I think how cool would it be if you know, we really had this kind of 
robust sense of understanding within our communities of what was going on in our spaces. And we were able to tell those stories in, in ways that typically we thought only like governments or academic researchers or other groups could do, um, but that we actually have some of those capabilities ourselves. So we'll see if nobody goes, um, you know, that's okay. Don't, nobody needs to feel any kind of pressure or obligation to go. I've just been trying to post, like you said, a few more opportunities to learn about different things here or there. <laughs>